Hi, this is E. David Crawford, Editor-in-Chief of Grand Rounds in Urology. I am honored to introduce a real legend in urology who is going to talk to us about dilating scarred corporal bodies for penile implant cylinder placement. Dr. John Mulcahy uh, is quite an accomplished physician and surgeon. He has a Ph.D. from the University of Michigan, did his urology training at Mayo, uh, spent some time at, in Kentucky, and then moved on to the University of uh, Indiana. He has pioneered many things in incontinence, uh, infections, and uh, awards. He was awarded the Golden Cane Award in 2017, Living Legends Award in 2019, been past presidents of a lot of societies. John, welcome, and thanks for taking time out of your busy day to share with our audience this topic. This presentation will discuss uh, how to dilate scarred corporal bodies for placing penile implant cylinders. It's challenging for many urologists to place penile implant cylinders into scarred corporate cavernosa. This situation occurs uh, frequently after removal of a previous cylinder for infection, erosion, or in cases of priapism, where the, there's total scarring of the corporal bodies. Another situation which may arise is uh, infection or abscess forming in the corpora due to a pharmacologic erection program where the injections of medication into the penis has resulted in an abscess forming or infection developing. Considerable scarring can occur in those situations as well. In my career, I've experienced numerous secondary cylinder placements uh, interscarred corporal bodies, and the presentation I'll be giving is uh, gained from the experience in that career of about 45 years of doing this, uh, <clears throat> with many trial and error situations where uh, we, re we <clears throat> achieve the results that we're achieving. The uh, approach that one takes, whether it's penis growth or infrapubic, I've found has, should be the one with the least number of previous surgical procedures. In other words, if the patient has had five procedures intrapubically uh, and one penis scrotally, you're probably going to run into less scar tissue if you go with a penis scrotal approach. Now, most urologists have their favorite approach, either intrapubic or penis scrotal, but an experienced urologist who is dealing with secondary placement of cylinders should be really facile with both approaches because, as I mentioned, one may be better than the other in certain circumstances such as this. The pseudocapsule formation contributes most of the scarring uh, that occurs after an implant is removed. If the first time procedure was abandoned due to, say, urethral perforation, the dilation the second time around should be fairly easy because there's no pseudocapsule present. I found also that uh, if you obtain adequate exposure with a broad incision, it makes the dilation and the access to the corpora much easier. I prefer midline incisions, midline penis scrotal, or midline infrapubic. Many urologists use transverse incisions, and I find that uh, the benefit of midline incisions is that it can be extended proximally or distally uh, to uh, facilitate uh, better exposure. Also, I always place a Foley catheter uh, before proceeding in this uh, type of a case. The reason is to identify the corpus brochure corpus spongiosum throughout the procedure. The goal is a careful dilation to avoid perforating the corpus spongiosum, because uh, the whole procedure will likely have to be abandoned if the corpus spongiosum is violated. Uh, I like to mobilize the penis from the surrounding tissue so that the anatomy is clear. As you know, the penis is a cylinder in shape, and if it's embedded deeply in scar tissue, sometimes the uh, location of the corpulatomy sites may not be that uh, clear. But if you can visualize the penis as a cylinder from dissecting it from surrounding scar. The incision sites are going to, in the corpulatomy are going to be much clearer and uh, less chance of getting into the dorsal neurovascular bundle, which is the nerves to the head of the penis uh, and sensation in that area. I like to uh, select a corpulatomy site that's about two to three centimeters in the mid shaft of the penis. And that way you have uh, dilation equally in both directions distally to the glands and proximal to the issue to porosities. Uh, if for some reason that the subcoronal approach is used, it's going to be a long dilation in one direction. So it's wise not to try 
a subcoronal approach for placement of a cylinder in a very scarred corporal body for that reason. The corporotomy should allow the scissors and values to be passed parallel to the shaft of the penis. In that way, you can secure that the uh, cylinders will be placed in, a, in the proper location. If it's angled, they're not parallel, perforation is more likely. When I place the Metzenbaum scissors, uh, I place them under the tunica albuginea, pointing away from the urethra, and dance with a spreading motion, uh, with force used on the scissors, pushing forward into the penile shaft. So basically, you're going down the center of the penis. You're not worried about the scissors going astray laterally because of the uh, location that you're in. And you press the scissors into the tissue, spread to cut into the tissue or separate the tissue. So it's spread, advance, spread, advance, and uh, the tissue will eventually spread under your fingertips. The, again, being cognizant of where the corpus spongiosum is located so that you don't really violate that structure. If there's a distal perforation, it's wise to abandon the case. There are a few urologists who will gain access to the faucet navicularis, or repair the defect in two layers, and leave the hypospadias created uh, possibly for repair in the future. But most urologists would not favor this approach and just abandon it, coming back five to six months later. I say five to six months because if you come back sooner, the likelihood of your scissors or dilators going into the previous channel created uh, <clears throat> in the previous procedure into the urethra is a possibility. So you want solid scar tissue to form before you return to uh, try another attempt at passing the cylinders. If it's a proximal perforation, it can be handled by a technique called a suture sling. You basically put a uh, double swedged on needle of trio or uh, two or proline through a rear tip extender or through the proximal end of the cylinder, uh, place the cylinder in its position slightly inflated, uh, bring the two needles out from the corporate, through the corporate, from the inside to the outside, slightly inflate the cylinder to make sure that the penis is in the right position with the tip near the gland's penis, uh, close the corporotomy, and then tie this suture over the corporotomy closure, leaving the uh, ends of the suture about an inch long so you can find them and remove the suture when the cylinder needs to be repaired years later. It's a very simple technique to do and they're very helpful in uh, repairing a proximal perforation without uh, uh, using foreign material. You aim for the uh, distal endpoint of the cylinders to be in the midlands area and the proximal endpoint to uh, be at the uh, ischial tuberosities. If necessary, to gain access distally to get a better bit of the cylinders, you can make a subcoronal incision and uh, work with the penis through the subcoronal incision to make sure the cylinder is seated far enough distally. If it's too far approximately, it will result in a floppy gland, which is going to interfere with the penetration. Once you've gained access to the uh, corporal bodies by the scissors, uh, you can broaden the caliber using dilators. And, uh, Usual dilators we use are the Hagar or Brooks dilators. And I usually try the, uh, these dilators first by favorite being the Hagar. It works better in my hands, I believe. Uh, if these dilators are snug, you can go with the Euromix or the Rocio cabinet tones. Euromix is a, basically a dilator that has a raised blade and shaving the tissue by an oscillating motion of this dilator uh, will broaden the caliber of the corporate body. The Rocio cabinet tone uh, has raised sharp projections, much like a wood rasp, and so you shave the tissue by an in and out motion of this cabinet tone uh, to gain a broader corporal bite. One instrument that's uh, I found very helpful, although it's usually not available in most institutions, is the Otis Urethra tone. This was used in the 1960s and earlier in urology to uh, treat urethral strictures. Uh, with the advent of the optical urethra tone in the 1970s, this instrument became obsolete, but some hospitals still have it around and is very useful in uh, <clears throat> broadening the caliber of scar corporal bodies. It's uh, basically two limbs which are separated by turning a proximal wheel. Uh, the outer limb has a groove for a blade, and when the uh, limbs are separated adequately that the blade is taut against the scar tissue, 
the uh, knife blade is pulled sharply through the groove and it cuts into the scar tissue. So uh, two or three cuts of the otis uh, will blow the caliber of the corporal body significantly. You make one cut, uh, rotate the leafotome about 15 degrees, make a second cut, uh, if necessary, a third cut, always cutting away from the corpus spongiosum. Uh, <clears throat> each cut will gain you one more, one larger Hagar dilator access caliber to the spongiosum. Also, uh, a, if you get a snug fit with a 10 or 11 dilator, uh, a downsize or narrow cylinder will give equally good rigidity as a standard size cylinder. Because when I discuss penile implants with patients, my uh, the model I use is a uh, inner tube on a bicycle tire. So if you have a an inner tube, and these three piece cylinders are basically cylindrical inner tubes, uh, they will give equally good rigidity in scarred corporal bodies that have a caliber of ten or eleven. Hagar dilator size, uh, as a standard size cylinder would give in a uh, standard non-scarred corporal body. So uh, this is a, something to be aware of. These were originally uh, constructed, these now cylinders for the uh, oriental market, but they have a very uh, uh, effective use in the scarred corporal bodies as well. Once I've placed the cylinders, I test by inflating both cylinders to make sure the tips are where they should be in the sublands area. Uh, make sure the amplitude two is coming out proximal to the shaft of the penis, the visible shaft of the penis, so that there's uh, no tubing visible on the side of the penis. And make sure that the uh, corporotomy is, is adequately sized. Uh, I then will deflate the cylinders, close the corporotomy, and inflate them with the good pressure to make sure that they do good axial rigidity. So during the procedure, there's a couple of inflations to ensure that they're uh, adequately sized and give adequately good, res good results. I think uh, dilating card scarred corporal bodies uh, tends to take patients uh, good attention to detail uh, as I've discussed in this procedure and a hopefully successful outcome. If there's any hesitation about the ability to perform these maneuvers as I've described, it's certainly no uh, shame to refer to an experienced urologists, and there are many of these throughout the country who can uh, have experience with this. In my experience, the more of these you do, the better you tend to get. Uh, and uh, a younger urologist who has not had a lot of experience is certainly well advised to refer on to an experienced urologist in these complicated situations. Thank you. John, great presentation. Thanks for um, all the pearls that you uh, uh, showed us to, today with this discussion. One of the things that you uh, have revolutionized are salvage protocols for prosthetic infections. I'm wondering if you might comment just a couple minutes on those and also the role of this, this new evaluation for infections, next generation sequencing for microbes and uh, fungal infections. Yeah, the, uh, the salvage procedure, which uh, we pioneered almost 30 years ago, has, has stood the test of time. Basically, when you have an infected implant, uh, <clears throat> you can remove the implant, wash the cavity out, and place a new implant at the same sitting with a success rate in the range of 80 to 90 percent. Uh, over the years, uh, that high success rate has really uh, not encouraged many people to challenge any of the solutions we use or the techniques of salvage that we use. Recently, though, this, there has been some challenge and some improvements in the uh, procedure. Uh, instead of placing back a three-piece device, the tendency now is to put back uh, malleable devices. That avoids a macerated scrotum and the reservoir cavity, and the success rate is actually higher with this approach. Uh, some patients want the three-piece back uh, after the infection is cleared and the uh, wound is settled down, and uh, this, this can easily be done. So uh, using a malleable device instead of a three-piece uh, has been a big advance. Also, the solutions we use were empiric originally. We used betadine, a hydrogen peroxide, and antibiotics. And with the 80 to 90 percent success rate, they said, well, that must be the way to go. But recently, they say, are these really the best solutions? And recent studies, mostly from orthopedic uh, literature, and they have much more experience with infected hips and 
knees and joints than we do with penile implants, they found that peroxide really does not have any advantage over the betadine and can be toxic to the tissue. So eliminating peroxide is probably a wise maneuver. Also very dilute betadine, up to tenfold dilution, uh, seems to give better antiseptic than the standard or half-strength betadine. Chlorhexidine has also been looked at, which we never considered originally, and this uh, is probably going to be a better antiseptic than betadine, but there's literal little evidence of this to date and it's not yet recommended. Uh, so really the better uh, solutions and the uh, more simple placement of a malleable have been advances in this area. Also the uh, use of pro prophylactic antibiotics is some uh, work done on that as well. The, uh, there was a recent study that showed that the a very large study where they had 153 positive cultures from implant infections and found that the standard vancomycin gentamicin prophylaxis will hit about 86 percent of the organisms that uh, were involved 100 percent of the organisms would be uh, eradicated by a combination of vancomycin piperacillin or zosin and an antifungal such as uh, <clears throat> fluconazole or amphotericin so the microbes that we're finding are more the uh, aggressive organisms which respond to these three or well, two uh, antibacterial medications, and there's a significant number of fungal organisms which would respond to the antifungal drugs. So these are recommendations which will probably be uh, brought into play with, the, with new guidelines when new guidelines for prosthetic infections are uh, reviewed. Again, John, thanks for your presentation and have a great day.